Hello there and welcome to my channel, Aqua Rach. And today I thought I would just do a quick video on inking with a dip pen and India ink. And I'm going to be using this composition that I am creating for my cousin. She recently got married and so I wanted to give her a gift that was a painting and I decided to do the painting in watercolor and ink. Now, spoiler alert, I ended up ruining this piece, so I have to start all over again, but the inking is not where I went wrong. I went wrong when I was doing the watercolor portion, and I started out with a really nice wash that I liked a lot, but for some reason, I got the idea in my head to splatter some watercolor onto it, and I didn't like it, of course, right away. I thought it was a big mistake, but then I thought, hey, you know what, sometimes with watercolor, the effect, once it's dry, isn't that dramatic, it won't be so crazy, uh, but it was. It was just crazy, and of course, the first splatter that I made went all over the dress and was like red, and it was just bad. Not good. So I am going to be redoing this composition, but I figured I could at least put the inking portion up. So right now all I'm doing is I had a sketch that I did and then once the sketch was done, I cleaned it up and put it onto some copy paper just from my printer. And then I'm using my carbon paper as I usually do to transfer the sketch onto my watercolor paper so that I don't have to do any sketching and erasing on my actual watercolor paper. So you can barely see the lines there, especially for that arch that they have in the background, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is you just dip your pen into your ink, just barely, and you're going to see that I don't run out of ink here for a really long time. So for these first lines that I'm doing, they're very strong. They're going to be in shadow, but then for this other line on the left, I didn't want that to be a solid line because that's where there's going to be a lot of light hitting that edge. And so what I did was I used very light pressure and I let the pen almost just skip across my paper so that I wouldn't get a solid line. I would kind of get a dotted line that wasn't too uniform. So there's lots of variation in the width of the marks that I made. And I'm going to be doing that a lot throughout this composition because when I ink for watercolor, I don't want the ink to be like a solid outline. I don't want this to look like some kind of cartoon and then I'm coloring it in with watercolor. And so what I'm doing is I'm looking for the areas that are receiving a lot of light. This is an outdoor composition, so there was a lot of direct sunlight here. And I'm applying a more solid line in areas that are in shadow. And then areas that are receiving more light, I'm trying to use more of an open line approach. And I think that when I redo this painting, I'll use more broken lines on all the florals as well. Because I think that I went overboard with outlining all of the flowers and it just wasn't a very natural look. And so here again, I'm using more of a broken line over on this edge where there's a little bit of light reflecting. And that's going to be really important when I do the dress as well. And when I refill or reload my pen, I always make sure after I dip it into the well that I shake it off a little bit because sometimes you will get a large droplet of ink that just kind of is able to cling on to your pen. And as soon as you put your pen to your paper or even just hovering your pen above your paper, that large drop or globule is going to be released and you're just going to get a mess. And so I think that can be a source of frustration when using a dip pen. But really making marks with a dip pen is not difficult. I think that sometimes people maybe overthink it a little bit. They think that because it's a strange shape, 
it's not like the typical pens that we write with that it's going to be difficult to make a mark. I know that that's how I used to feel about dip pens and now I just absolutely love using them. It just is something that's very tactile and a little bit old-fashioned and I really enjoy it. So I'm being really careful on the wedding dress. I'm not wanting to use too many solid lines, but of course, as I said, I think I did use too many solid lines when going around the different flowers and florals in this composition. So that's something that I definitely want to correct. And making mistakes, you know, it used to be a big source of frustration for me, especially if I spent a lot of time working on something. But honestly, now when I paint, almost every single time I sit down to paint, I think to myself, you know what, this might just be a practice run <laughs> because I might mess up. And that really helps because sometimes I don't mess up and then I feel really great, but sometimes I do. And instead of being frustrated, I really see it more as an opportunity to do better next time. So even though I didn't really feel like I messed up the inking portion of this composition, I still am already thinking of ways that I can improve that portion of this composition in addition to not making the same grave mistakes that I had made before. All right, so I'm trying to be very careful with the florals, those are of course very delicate shapes, so I'm trying to leave those lines very light and wispy as much as I can. And then when I get down to things like shoes or the pants of the groom, I don't have to be quite so careful. I can just use some nice bold lines. And I also try to think about what I'm going for in the composition. So this is going to be a painting of their wedding. And so I really want a lot of feminine energy in here as well as some masculine energy. So when I am inking the bride, I want to use more curvaceous, light, wispy lines. And then when I'm inking the groom, I want to use more angular lines, stronger lines. It's a very subtle effect, but I feel like that is a really good way just to add a little bit of energy into a composition in very subtle but effective ways. And now I'm getting up to the heads of the groom and the bride, and this is where you definitely don't want to go overboard with your ink because it's very easy to make people look cartoonish if you apply too much ink, if you keep that outline too solid, too strong. So I'm definitely doing a lot more of broken lines around the hair. We don't have a lot of facial features. Actually, I don't think there's any facial features in this composition because they're actually kissing. So they're facing each other and their faces are obscured from us. But that actually presents a challenge on its own because I need to create that impression with a lot of other shapes that are not faces. And so here again, working on the flowers, trying very hard to be very light, although I definitely can do better. I don't need to articulate every single individual floral that I see in there. And then the hair I'm keeping very curved, very light. And this is just about it. So I'm just kind of looking for any lines that I might have missed. Cleaning out my dip pen, very important. Always rinse it off, always dry it off. And then you should even use some rubbing alcohol to further clean it and even remove the nib and clean it individually and then lay it flat to dry and that's it. <laughs> 